Hi everybody, in today's video we are going to discuss why you need to authenticate your email domain and I'm also going to demonstrate how to authenticate your email domain using system.io and Google Workspace. Hi, I'm Brandon. If you get any value out of today's video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and also activate the notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Right, let's talk about the why. The very first and probably the most important reason why you want to authenticate your email domain is for email deliverability. You want your emails to land up in the inbox of your recipient. It's already tough enough trying to get your email delivered to the inbox of your recipients just with the copy that you put into your body of your email and into the subject line of that, of that email as well. If you want some tips and pointers on how to improve your email deliverability with your copy, be sure to watch the video above. What we're talking about here today is the actual back-end stuff without getting all technical about it. It is how your computer ends up communicating with your email server and determining whether this is a legitimate email domain that is sending these emails. This is a once-off step that you need to configure and it is done in conjunction with your email delivery service provider or your autoresponder and, and the DNS provider for your email service. So in this particular case today, we're going to be talking about system.io, who is my email delivery service provider or my autoresponder and Google Workspace or G Suite as, as it was previously known and setting up the communication between those two parties. So our starting point is going to be our email delivery service provider or our autoresponder. And for that, I'm going to head over to system.io. Once you've logged in, head over to this drop-down arrow here where you might have a, a picture of yourself if you've already got that on your account. Then head over to settings. On the left-hand menu, go over to mail settings. If this is the first domain that you are authenticating on system.io, there won't be a domain listed in this section. But right now I'm gonna be setting up a second domain. So what we are going to enter in at the domain name is the portion of your email address that is to the right of the at sign. Select continue and system.io will now provide you with three CNAME records. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to copy these three records and we're going to add them into the DNS zones of our email domain provider. Now, not to worry, that may sound a little bit complicated, but it is pretty straightforward. And for today's demonstration, I have purchased my email domain through Google Workspace. So you head off to domains.google.com, log in there with your account details. So head over to the DNS section on the left hand menu scroll down to custom records if that has not expanded just click on the arrow on the right hand side and then select manage custom records then head over to create a new record now head back over to system.io and copy the name section of the very first record and then head back to google domains Copy that in under your host name section. Now, some domain providers operate slightly differently. What you can see over here is we've got that first code section of what we copied from system.io. Then it had a dot and then it had our domain name, in this case, healthliving.tips. But here you can see that Google Domains already has healthliving.tips.healthliving.tips because it already assumes that you will be using your health.living domain on the end of whatever you're going to be inputting into the host name section. So for the purposes of Google Domains, we will delete the remainder of that domain plus the dot that was separating the code beforehand. So now you can see that what is going to be input here is the code.healthliving.tips, which is exactly what we copied from system.io. The type, we're going to change that to a C name. You can leave the time to live, the TTL amount to the default. And at the data section, we're going to head back to system.io and we are going to copy the value section and put that in here at the data section and we will paste that into this particular field. We've got two more records to create. So we'll head back to create a new record again, head back to system.io. So we already know with google.domains, we don't need to have the dot healthy living dot tips portion of this name. So we'll just copy the first portion of it, head back here, put, paste that into this host name. And once again, here you can see that it's got system IO one, dot underscore domain key dot health living dot tips. It already inputs that last part of the domain name in there. 
head over, select CNAME once again, and head back to system.io, and we are gonna copy this value. Let me just get that, Control C once again, head back over here, Control V or paste that in, and now we just need to create our third record, head back to system.io. Once again, we do exactly the same thing all the way up until that dot just prior to our domain name. Copy that, paste that in. Once again, C name is our type and our data or our value is going to be this last um, in quotes over here. And then what we're going to do is go and select save. Next, what we're going to check is that these DNS records have actually been updated globally. And in order to do that, we're going to head over to a site called dnschecker.org. Once dnschecker.org has loaded, head back to the email settings that were provided to you from system.io, go and select any one of those particular names that we put into our DNS records with Google domains, head back here and paste that into this text box, change it from an A record through to a C name record and go and select search. This will let us know whether any of our records, any of our DNS records have been updated globally. And here you can see that DNS record, that C name is already updated all around the world. There's a whole lot of, a whole lot of green ticks there. There are one or two, as you can see here, I've got one red cross and that just indicates that that DNS server has not updated with the information that we just input into our DNS zone. If that is the case, not to worry, all is fine. That's, that server will update in due course. If, however, you get all red crosses, then what you want to do is you want to make sure that you, when you were copying and pasting over into your DNS zones in your in Google domains, you want to make sure that you didn't mistakenly have the domain repeated twice or you had a case of where you forgot a dot out or something along those lines, just go back and check your records in your DNS zone and update those or find the mistake that you may have made. And head back to email settings, go and select your second name, head back to DNS checker and replace this text box here with that particular name field. Once again, do a search for that just to make sure that everything is returning correctly and you'll see there was an update and once again, all green. And now you can actually see no, Singapore still hasn't updated, is the only one that hasn't. There must be a problem with that particular server today. And you will then go and do the same thing for your third record as well and come and check and test that that CNAME record is updated globally. When once that is done, then you know that your DNS records have updated successfully. Head back to your email settings here. You can close out of that. And once your page has refreshed, you'll see here that healthliving.tips is actually pending. If you're following through the actual instructions in system.io, they will tell you at this point that you need to contact the support desk at system.io to get your domain verified. That's not actually required. Just allow, just allow for some time for this to actually be verified. And in my case, when I had my first domain verified, it probably took less than an hour in order for it to get verified. Once your domain is verified, you can then start creating your first email campaign or sending out your emails using system.io on behalf of your domain. And so you can be assured that when your emails are delivered to your recipients, that the backend checks that are happening are taking place and your domain will be authenticated and it'll be seen as a legitimate email and that system.io is allowed to deliver email on your behalf. Next, while you're waiting for your domain to be verified, you can then edit some of the other configurable items on this page. So the likes of your sender email address, you can update that, um, who your sender name is. So this is what will appear just above your subject line on most, um, on most email clients. And you can also set up a test email address so that when you're testing, put your emails through system.io, that is the email address that your emails will be delivered to and as you scroll down you can then choose whether you want to display your affiliate link within your email within your actual email or not for system.io and then there's the unsubscribe button i do not recommend that you remove that you should keep that and you have various language options in which you can have that displayed once you're done with that select save and that is how easy it is to authenticate your email domain name. 
Now, I firmly believe in creating online assets that will allow you to create a passive income. If you want to find out more about how to create these online assets and what these assets are, I will have a link in the description below where you can find out some more information about that. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and to activate the notifications bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. So till the next time we chat, have a great day.